Welcome to another video of the Web3 Smart Contract Exploit series. And in this video, we're going to perform a live attack for the purpose of teaching you what not to do in your code. When you want to identify the call of a method within the smart contract, do you use message.sender or tx.origin? If you use tx.origin or you're confused about when you should use it, I'm going to show you an exploit that has to do with tx.origin, which will show you exactly when not to use it. Let me demonstrate the exploit. So we have the victim smart contract and in the smart contract, you can deposit, you can get the balance. And then finally, you can withdraw the amount you deposited to anyone yourself. You can give someone a gift. So the main thing that's important here is on line 16, we say require that the balances of the person sending the transaction, which is TX or origin, is more than equal to the amount. Otherwise, they don't have the sufficient balance required to send money to anyone. So let's see if that works. First, I'm going to deposit 10 ETH to the small contract. So if I check the balances of my address, it would see that I have 10 ETH. So if I say withdraw to recipient amount, I am going to do 2 ETH. That transaction will work. The balance of the entire small contract is 8 because I'm the only person who deposited and there's only 8 ETH remaining after the 2 and I receive 2 ETH back. So let's say there's another person who wants to try to exploit the smart contract. You copy their address and paste it here. And this person is saying, well, I would love to withdraw two ETH to myself as well. I see you have eight ETH in the smart contract. And if I try the transaction, it will fail as we expect because that particular user does not have a balance within the smart contract. Balances is zero. Perfect. So now we're going to deploy the attack of smart contract because this person got a bit smarter. They're like, oh, you think I can't attack you? I read your code and I see a way that I can. Now we're going to deploy the attacker. The attacker requires the address of the victim contract because of the way the code is written. And then now this user is going to attempt the attack again. So now if that user calls attack, it still doesn't work. So how do they get this exploit to work? Well, the way in which this exploit works is that the person who owns the contract has to call the attack method. And I know that might sound crazy. Why would the person who owns the contract call the attack method? But we very well know phishing is something that's been happening a lot online. Also in Web3, you click the wrong link or you hit a button on a fake app that can cause you to call code that is bad. So let's do attack. The transaction was successful. And then if we check, the attacker was able to receive money. So they didn't have to run the code. They had to get the person who had money in the contract to run the code but they were still able to attack the contract. But that shouldn't have worked because again, if we go to the actual smart contract that is responsible for withdrawing funds, you have to have a balance in the smart contract for that money to be sent. So how is this person able to use phishing to cause the user to send money to them? In the withdrawal method in line 16, it requires that the balance of the person sending the transaction to be more than equal to the amount that they're trying to withdraw. The difference between TX origin and message sender is that TX origin will use only the externally owned account that first started the transaction. Any transaction that executes in the blockchain has to be executed by an externally owned account. However, that externally owned account can call a contract, which can call another contract that can call another contract. So that gives you a chain of calls. So TX origin will always give you the first address that started this chain. And this address is always an externally owned account. Message or sender tells you the immediate person who called the smart contract. So Alice calls contract A, contract A calls contract B. In contract B, if we check the message or sender, the answer will be contract A. If we're checking TSL origin, the answer would be Alice. So the way how this vulnerability works is not that using TX origin is necessarily bad. It's just that if you're using TX origin to determine whether or not an action is allowed or not, TX origin will always point to the original account that initiated the transaction, even when it's the malicious transaction making the call. When the attack function of the TX origin attacker is called, the contract checks the balance of the user that initiated the transaction. And in this case, because it was a phishing attack, the user is actually somebody who genuinely does have a balance within the smart contract. And because of the code in the phishing contract, they are able to withdraw the funds instead to their own account. And this is how the exploit happens. So the lesson here is using TX.origin for anything that has to do with authorization is a big no-no because you never know if someone were to use some sort of a phishing attack to get a user to call a method in another contract, which then eventually calls the contract involved. Let us use this information to figure out how we will solve this. We created a function called TXOrigin.Survivor, and in line 16, instead of using TX.Origin, it uses message.sender. 
This is the only change that's needed to make this work. And I'm going to demonstrate that. Let us deploy the survivor. I'm going to deposit 10 ether and check the balance. Okay, I have. So now I'm going to withdraw some to myself, just like two. So that transaction works. If attacker tries to go directly to the smart contract to withdraw to themselves, it doesn't work. But if the attacker now says, aha, what I will do is I'll trick this person into calling um, a method within my own smart contract, and then I'll use my smart contract to exploit theirs, it won't work. So let me demonstrate that. We need to convince the other user like, hey, why don't you click this button to clean for an airdrop? So click attack and it does not work. Message or sent up represents the immediate caller, whereas TX or origin represents the person who first initiated the transaction. When you're coding any smart contract that has to do authorization, using message or sender is the best approach. It prevents users from being attacked by phishing. If you would like to run these tests yourself, then definitely check my GitHub repository where you'll find the code for the victim, the attacker and survivor. Please use this carefully as it's just for education purposes. And you'll also find some tests written in hard hat, which does apply the same thing. So if you would like to run more tests and see if you can find more bugs in the smart contracts, I very well welcome that. And if you'd like to learn more about other smart contract exploits in this format, then check out the smart contract security exploit series. There's one about re-entrances and arithmetic overflow, which are two of the most common attacks that happen in Web3. So see you in that video. Bye.